Hi, I'm Heather Paul with the Desert Rats field crew, and behind me is a new technology that we're testing called Vapor. Danny, how's it going? So far, so good. Things are going really well. Excellent. Now tell me a little bit about yourself. So my name's Danny Glavin. I'm an astrobiologist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, and I'm the PI of the Vapor instrument that's right behind us. And what did your team have to do to prepare for our field activities? So this is our first time out at Desert Rats, and specifically at this field site uh, in Arizona. And so we had to do a lot of preparation to make sure that we had all the components, all the spares, in case something goes wrong here. What I've learned in the past is if something, w if you don't bring it, it will fail. Mm -hmm. And so we've done that. We've had to deal with the high temperatures here, which we haven't had to deal with before. So we brought cooling fans to make sure vapor's nice and happy. Today I was crushing a rock and accidentally cut my finger. So we've had oh, the blood. No. It's hot out here, I've been sweating, but no tears yet, so <laughs> things have been going really well. I guess well. that's good. Maybe you could have tears of joy at there the end. There you go, there you go. Well, great. Well, let's see what a few of your other team members have to say about the experiment. Sounds great. So I'm here with Charles from the Vapor team. Charles, how's it going today? It's going very well. Uh, my name is Charles Molespin. I'm a research scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and we're here for the DRATS testing to do some analog field testing of vapor, which is the volatile analysis by pyrolysis of regolith. Wow, that's a mouthful. It is. So, so what does it do? <laughs> so basically vapor is a pyrolysis mass spectrometer, which means that we take samples of things, or gas, heat it up to about 1200 degrees Celsius, and then measure the volatiles and the gases that evolve off of heating the sample. Why would something like that be important? Because when you have samples in Mars or lunar analogs or you know, if you go to an asteroid, you have gases that are trapped inside of the material. And when you heat them up, you can determine the composition of the material based off of what comes off at certain temperatures because each gas will be released at certain temperatures. And so we do this all under vacuum to simulate lunar conditions. And we heat the ovens, which are down here in the SMS carousel. We have three ovens. And we load a sample in through here. It's about 30 milligrams of uh, sample. And then we heat it up slowly at about 20 degrees per minute till we get to about 1200 degrees Celsius. The gas travels up this tube into our mass spectrometer here. And then we look at the resulting spectra on the computers over there. So when you're talking about materials, are you guys looking at air? Or are you looking at soil or rocks? We can do both. Okay. We have an atmospheric inlet here, so we can take atmospheric measurements. Okay. Or we can take solid regular samples and drop them into the oven. And specifically for this year, are you doing both or just one or the other? We will be doing both. So for the DRATS campaign, the crew will go out and collect samples, bring them back at the end of the day. We'll process them, put them in our oven, let it pump down overnight so that it gets down to a good vacuum. In the morning, we'll come back, heat it up, and then look at the spectrum afterwards. So to do this kind of a project, what kind of a background do you have in education? Um, my degrees are in astrophysics and physics. Wow. So, so. you must be pretty smart. That's all hearsay. <laughs> so how are things going for the first few days of testing? Things have gone very well. We spent the first day setting everything up and did some preliminary blank testing just to make sure all the instruments are working. And we've run two samples so far, and everything's looking good. Good. All right. Well, we'll check back with your team a little bit later into the test. So Thank good luck. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. My name is Eric Mum. I work for Honeybee Robotics, and uh, my job was to provide the Vapor team with this robotic sample carousel here. A carousel? So I'm not seeing any horses going around and around. What kind of carousel is this? No horses. Instead of horses, we have pyrolysis ovens. All right. Uh, which NASA Goddard and Danny's team developed for us. Um, my job is to keep those ovens safe and sound and to transport them from uh, position A to position B, uh, accepting samples and also sealing them for their instrument. So to do that kind of work, what is your background? I'm a mechanical engineer uh, with a little bit, enough to be dangerous on the electrical engineering <laughs> side of things and computer software side of things, but uh, a mechanical engineer by trade. Very cool. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Inga, how are the tests going so far? Tests are going great. Uh, we had a couple glitches in the beginning, but actually the second day everything was up and running and uh, we've been running a lot of samples and uh, everything's good. So we're primarily focusing on the science and not on how the instrument is operating. And I think we have a pretty good characterization of the field test by now. Um, we're in line with the data that they collect in GeoLab. So uh, I think we're doing a great job and everything's working fine. So, Well, congratulations. That's excellent news. Yeah, it's great. Now, what is your educational background? Um, well, I have a master's in aerospace engineering and a PhD in planetary science. So, and I've always been interested in instrument development because it's a combination of both. And I rolled into the vapor 
uh, development actually from the beginning. So it's really cool to see it working here out in the desert and uh, I'm leading the field uh, testing so it's, it's nice to see that everything's working and uh, so it's, yeah, it's great. Well, congratulations on a great test and we wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you very much.